and welcome to Skag New Products. Uh, it looks like we have some exciting new products to introduce today, Dennis. Uh, we sure do. As a matter of fact, we're going to start off with the turf storm. Excellent. Let's take a look. Meet the stand-on spreader sprayer that's taking the industry by storm. The Skag Turf Storm. Built Skag Tough, the Turf Storm is a must-have tool for the serious landscape chemical applicator and anyone looking to expand their lawn care offerings. A natural fit for large commercial properties, the Turf Storm also makes itself at home while treating residential lawns. With right-sized liquid and dry capacities, the Turf Storm will help you get more done per day for maximum productivity and profitability. 60 gallons of liquid capacity helps you keep working longer before having to refill, and the tanks are designed for quick and easy filling and draining. The fold-away spray boom allows for spraying widths of 2, 6, 8, or 10 feet, and an optional foam marker accessory is available. An auxiliary spray gun and 75-foot hose reel makes spot spraying and accessing difficult areas a breeze. Spread dry materials up to 25 feet wide, thanks to a high-torque electric spreader mower. Accuracy and consistency of application are easy to maintain, with controls and gauges that are clearly marked and located within easy reach. You'll get your work done comfortably thanks to the Turf Storm's ergonomic drive controls, large cushion, and spacious operator platform with suspension. To ensure long service life despite exposure to corrosive chemicals, critical structural components and hardware are made of stainless steel. Visit your local Skag dealer today to discover how you can increase your profit-making potential with the Skag Turf Storm. Skag, simply the best. All right, uh, so we're gonna talk about the Turf Storm. You guys got to see the nice video on that. Uh, actually, last year at GIE Expo in Louisville, Kentucky, we introduced this machine. Not this particular machine, but we had a prototype there. Uh, quite a few changes. Uh, we took a lot of feedback from that show, brought it back to our facilities here in Mayville, and started making changes. Uh, for example, at the one that was at the show last year, it had 40 gallons of capacity. This has actually got 60 gallons of capacity. So a lot of changes that went into play uh, from that show. Uh, and it's something that we typically will do. We'll get that feedback, bring it back, and start working on those changes if it makes sense. Um, this machine here is actually a what we call a pilot build. Uh, we actually built a pilot run already. We actually shipped it out to our distribution network. Um, and most of our territory managers around the nation have actually been showing them to dealers. Uh, some dealers might have already seen it. Uh, some end users might have already been able to run it. Uh, talked to a couple of our guys early this morning and they were actually out doing demos again today with one of the pilot units. Uh, the Turf Storm is actually slated for production uh, next month. Uh, so sometime next month is when we're planning on a build. And again, just like I mentioned earlier, this will be built uh, and is final assembled over in our Beaver Dam facility. Uh, so to talk about some features on it, uh, Pat touched about on this earlier. This is our new five gallon fuel tank. It is a top draw fuel tank. Uh, easy to read, shut off valve on it, uh, easy to read uh, uh, gauge on here. Uh, also incorporated a cup holder on there for operators who are out there, especially in summer months, be able to carry a drink with them. A uh, large cap, tethered cap, so it's easy to fill the fuel tank. Uh, parking brake is right here. It's easy to reach, so operators on a machine or off the machine be able to get to access the parking brake, uh, so very convenient for the operator. Uh, a nice operator station, including um, a nice bolstered pad, so you can see the bolstering on it actually kind of captures the operator, so they're very comfortable in that. Um, the pad is actually removable. You can take the pad off, and on the back of the pad, you'll see the, the labeling that we have on the back here. This gives your chemical applications. Uh, so that way an operator doesn't have to go back to the owner's manual or go online to look up what granular or what liquids um, how much you're supposed to be putting down per thousand square feet, they can actually access it right in the back of the pad. So nice and convenient for the operator. Doesn't have to go to a truck, right on a machine. Also in the back of the machine, um, easy access to the drive system. So you can see the 10cc pumps 
mounted right in the back, so it's nice and easy for the operator to get to, for a server shop to get to. Um, on the very back of the machine, the platform is a suspension platform, so you can see it's got some bounce to it. Um, not overly bouncy, it's kind of like the V-Ride, you want to make sure that you have comfort without added bounce on there. So a very comfortable platform. Um, on the very back, you're going to see it has tie-down loops on either side, a tie-down loop on either side, and that's for when we're on a trailer. Um, and then we also have them in the front as well. We have a couple of holes that are mounted in the back already, and those are going to be for an optional fertilizer trays. So when somebody is doing granular, they're do doing dry in a hopper, they can actually put extra bags of uh, dry in the back. So they can carry, instead of having to go back to their truck and, and refill the hopper, they can stop where they're at, pull the bags out, and continue to fill the hopper up. So very convenient. Again, that'll be an accessory uh, for this machine as well. When we talk about the hopper, um, we got a nice uh, instrument panel here, and yes, when people look at this, they say, ooh, there's a lot going on there. It's kind of like an airplane. There's a lot of valves and gauges and things like that. Um, not so much. Once you get on the machine and actually start running it, uh, start to use this, it's, it's very simple. It's not a mower, it's not a lawnmower, um, but it does become simple after you get the hang of what you're doing here. Uh, for example, this right here, uh, push this pull, this actually is a spreader pattern adjustment. So you can actually adjust the pattern. So you can open and close the pattern on your spreading when you're doing um, granular. Um, over here is the spreader switch to turn on the spreader. So pretty simple, pretty simple. Uh, right underneath the controls, this is the speed control for the spreader. So you could, if again, depending on the properties that you're doing, you don't want to spread outside certain areas or the granulars that you're using, you could speed it up or slow it down. It's, it's at all at finger's reach. So super convenient, super easy to get to. Uh, we also have a hopper gate. So when you turn that spreader on, um, the spreader's spinning, but it's not dropping anything into the, into the spinner. You actually have to open up the hopper gate to allow it to drop down, okay? So you can open and close it on the fly. Um, and then it also has a side deflector. The deflector is you're uh, spraying or you're spreading along uh, landscape, along flower beds, things like that. You can actually open and close the deflector plate so that way you're not spreading it to those flower beds. So it's a nice convenient thing uh, for operators to keep things out of, out of their customers' flower beds. Uh, so some nice, really easy features when it comes to the spreading side of it. Now when we talk about the spraying side of it, again, same thing. Uh, very easy to operate, just need to know where things are when an operator goes out there. Um, right in front, you're going to see four hoses, and basically those four hoses are left and right returns and left and right supplies. So you have two tanks. I mentioned it earlier. you got two tanks. So this is your left-hand supply, your left-hand return. If you want to operate out of the left tank only, I just turned it on. If you want to operate out of both tanks, you can turn both tanks on. So now you're operating out of both of them. So you can actually operate with two different chemicals in either tank. Or you could cross feed the tanks by having these valves open. So if I want to operate just out of the left tank, I'm going to shut the right tanks off. So it's pretty simple to be able to do that. Now to spray, you have these valves right here. So this opens and closes. We'll get to the boom in a minute. But this is your middle section and these are your two outside booms. So you can actually spray with one or all three at any time. So you want to shut it off because again, you're going into an area where you don't want to spray compound, you can shut that boom off. So it's pretty simple. Uh, to adjust the pressure, we have a nice gauge right here um, and a valve to be able to adjust the pressure to increase or decrease the pressure of the output on that boom. So liquid filled gauge, so it gives an accurate reading of how much pressure is going to be coming out of that boom. Again. Uh, Pretty simple, it's, it looks like it's a lot going on here, and it probably is, it can be a little intimidating until somebody gets on this machine and actually looks at it. And if you spend the time to do it, um, and we will be training our dealers on how to operate these as well. Uh, and the last thing is the gauge that's up here. This gauge, um, it sets your ground speed, uh, so you can actually adjust your ground speed, so that way you tighten it down, and you can actually see how fast you're going. The turf storm will go up to eight miles an hour. 
Now, you're not going to spread or you're not going to spray at 8 miles an hour. Typically, those guys are operating about 4 to 5 miles an hour. So they're not really going any faster than that. So you want to be able to adjust that ground speed, and you have to look at that gauge. The gauge is actually operated off of a magnetic pickup on the wheel. So you can actually see it. So however fast that wheel is going, it will read it out on this gauge. So not only is it just for mile an hour, but also that gauge will tell you how long you're operating on a property. So if you're doing a couple acre property or half acre property, whatever the property is, you can actually turn that on to tell you how long you're on that property. So customers are paying for time. Um, and if you're on that property too long or you're underestimated, you're going to know that. So not only does it give you the mile an hour, but it also is going to give you um, the time that you're on that property as well as a regular hour meter, how long the machine has been running uh, through the course of the jobs, the week, whatever time that you want to set on that. Uh, so it's a really nice feature to be able to have that on here. Um, if we come around to this side, and again, I mentioned that it is um, 60 gallons of capacity when it comes to the liquid chemicals. Um, Nice big port to be able to fill the tanks up. Uh, so a lot of companies actually have large tanks mounted in the back of their trucks. They're already pre-mixed. They can actually fill it in there, uh, be able to fill it up fast, get, get it back out into the job site. Uh, so 60 gallons of capacity. It's actually got, you can actually, it's uh, 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 gallons are marked on the side of the tank. So you can actually see how much capacity is in either side of the tank. Uh, the bottom of the tank actually has a um, clean out. It's actually got a drain at the bottom of the tank so that way you don't have to leave chemical in it. You can drain it out at the end of the day and clean that tank out. Um, on the side, uh, this is a standard hose reel with a spot sprayer. Uh, so this is for tight areas where you're not going to get the machine in. You can actually pull the hose out and be able to spray those tight areas or still stand on the machine, and if you're doing something like along the side of a driveway or a sidewalk and you just got some weeds that you're going to pick up, you don't have to pull it out. You don't have to get off the machine. You can actually stay on the machine and grab the wand and be able to spray right on the side. Um, the pump is actually operate. It's a five-gallon per minute pump that operates the, the fluid flow. We'll have a optional seven-gallon per minute pump available for this machine as well. So uh, people are going to be putting... Um, uh, additional tanks on them, things that we're looking at, uh, would look at a seven gallon per minute pump. Uh, attached to the pump is a strainer. Uh, so it's on a, mounted on the side here. I actually have a clear one here just to kind of show you what it looks like. Uh, but that strainer is to catch any debris so it doesn't get stuck in the nozzles in the front of the machine. So simple strainer, very easy to access. Um, and that's something that should be cleaned on a regular basis by the operators. Uh, it's easy access, easy to clean. Uh, we get into the front of the machine, and our nozzles are actually T-Jet nozzles. Uh, so easy, again, easy access. They have a strainer inside to, again, catch debris. Uh, so that way it is not going to uh, cause any issues with spraying. Um, it actually has a diaphragm in the back, so that way... Um, with this diaphragm, when they shut the pump off, what's going to happen is um, it'll shut the fluid flow off. So it's not going to continue to leak all over the place. It'll shut it off. Uh, the booms on either side will actually fold out. So you have three nozzles on the, in the middle. And again, that red switch in the middle. And then you also have one on the outside. So either side you have an additional one. So it'll actually spray uh, Two, six, eight, ten feet, ten foot patterns is what it will spray. So it's a nice, nice feature to be able to have that option of again using any or all the booms at the same time. Um, in the door here that you're seeing right behind, uh, right behind this boom is actually our battery. Uh, so we have it captured inside, so that way it's protected from any of the uh, chemicals, the liquid chemicals or the dry chemical. Uh, in the front of the machine, this is a 220 pound hopper. And again, it'll have accessories of the trays on the back to carry two more bags of fertilizer. 220-pound um, poly hopper, so again, poly's not going to rot. It has a stainless screen tray inside this hopper. Um, and again, when you're operating it from, from that station, um, everything that's hidden underneath, I have a sample right here. So when you're opening and closing that gate, this is the gate that you're opening and closing. So when you're adjusting the pattern, that's the pattern right here. So this is the pattern that's getting adjusted. 
to open and close this gate to adjust it is in the front right here. Most operators are going to set it for the granular that they're dropping and they're not going to touch it again. So they're basically opening and closing the gate is what they're doing. So to adjust it, gate is closed, they turn it and it's going to open that gate less or more depending on which way they're going to turn this knob. So they're going to open and close that. Okay. So super simple, super easy to get to. Again, underneath when we're talking about the hopper, um, it's got a poly spinner on it. Um, so a poly spinner, so that way it's gonna, it'll last a little bit longer. It's also replaceable, easy access. And the reason it's easy access is because our motor is an electric motor uh, and it's on the bottom. It's not inside the hopper. Some of the other units that are out in the field today have hydraulic motors that are inside the hopper that become a little bit more cumbersome to be able to change these wearable items like the impeller. Uh, that motor is actually a sealed motor, so it's protected from, uh, from moisture, from, from the dry chemicals that are going to be in there, for anything that's getting sprayed out the front of it. Um, and actually, behind that motor, we actually put an access door that gives access to service shops to the engine. Um, again, it's something that we, we thought about uh, because you got to have access to the engine. These, are, these, these machines are tight, they're compact, uh, not very easy to get to things. Uh, so we wanted to have a door to give access to service shops to get to the engine on that. Um, on the outside here, I mentioned that deflector plate. This is the deflector right here. So I showed you the, the knob to open and close it. This is it. So open, you got full spread pattern, and you can close it so that way you're not spreading into uh, a customer's flower beds, things like that. Um, so again, another nice feature. If you look at the front end, the caster wheels, uh, there's some out there that have actually locks on the caster wheels. We don't have locks. And the reason we don't have locks was the machine was dynamically balanced uh, to make sure that it gives great stability. And with that great stability, it allows it to be able to do hillsides without nose diving down. Um, if you nose dive down, you need wheel locks. Well, we don't need wheel locks because of the balance that we have on this machine. So it's a great, great feature to have that on here and not have to put those wheel locks on there. So uh, come around over to this side here. Um, this side we have, this is a accessory foamer kit. Uh, and the foamer kits are, if you're doing larger properties, you need to be able to see where you're spraying. Obviously, liquid chemical, you can't see it when it's on a lawn. Um, so what do we do? You have a, a solution that gets put in here, you flip this foamer switch on, and little foam balls will fall out of this nozzle right here. So that way you can identify where you just finished your spray pattern. So when you get down to one end, turn around and come back, it's easy to identify where that came from or where you, where you left off. So that way you get a nice, a nice pattern uh, for your sprayer. Um, and the, what it's powered by is a Briggs Vanguard engine. So it's a 21 horse Briggs Vanguard. Uh, it's got the canister air filter on it. And one of the big features that we have on this engine is a 50 amp charging circuit. Uh, so it's got a 50 amp alternator on there. And the reason why is when you're running all of these switches and you're running that electric motor, you want to be able to make sure that you're going to have the power, not just the engine power to drive this machine, but also the electric power to power all of these other features that are on this. Uh, so it's, a, it's another very nice feature that's on here. Um, again, be in production um, next month. Pilot units are in the field today. Uh, customers are being able to operate them, check them out today. Dealers are being able to see those. Um, retail on this machine, uh, without the accessories on it, is going to be $14,725. Um, and again, uh, look for it at your dealerships. Um, one thing that I, I wanted to point out also is the stainless steel. Everybody's looking at, pointed out the stainless steel on this machine. Everything that we could make stainless steel is stainless steel on here. Uh, last year when we were at GIE, even the tower was a painted steel tower. That is now stainless steel as well. So another big change that we had last year. So the complete chassis, the spray system, the tower, everything is all stainless steel on this machine. It, it basically keep the corrosion away, make the machine last longer. So I think you see that in the other products that we offer. We like our products to last long time, so that way our customers are coming back to Skag and buying more. Um, so that's about that. About covers our turf storm. Uh, 
With that, uh, we're going to uh, turn it over to our latest machine, our latest one that we would, again, normally show at GIE, and that's going to be our 30-inch mower. Thank you. So for those of you that have been following us on social uh, throughout the last week or so, you've seen quite, quite a bit of teasers of this machine. Um, as Dennis briefly mentioned, this what you're looking at right here is a prototype machine. It is a 30 inch commercial walk behind mower called the Skag SFC. That will stand for the Skag Finish Cut. So one thing we were really hoping to achieve as Dennis touched on briefly at GIE Expo this year was have this machine in front of the thousands, thousands of landscapers that attend that show, let them see it, let them touch, feel it, operate it out in the demo area, similar to what they did with the turf storm last year and get all that feedback. Fortunately, we're not able to do that this year, but uh, just a quick reminder, once this, is, once this event is all done, all of this, all these video clips will be posted online. Use that as your opportunity to provide feedback based on what you're seeing here today. And again, just because this is a prototype machine, what you are seeing here today, just like the turf storm, is very, very likely going to change come production time. But let's give you a look at the machine where it currently sits right now. So the machine is powered by a Kohler Command Pro CV224 engine. It's been performing really well for us out in the field in the testing. We have it at a few different test facilities, as well as some landscapers using it, uh, getting a feel for it and doing the testing for us. So that's been proven to be a very good package for this machine. Uh, the major structural components of the machine, the cutter deck and the frame, all heavy-duty stamped steel. Um, so rock-solid, tough, no stamped aluminum, no lightweight steel, all fully fabricated heavy-duty steel on this machine. So it kind of really does live up to that name and the standard of uh, Skag power equipment. We'll take a look underneath this cutter deck, which that didn't come off that easy for me in rehearsal, but I'm, I become a pro. So looking at underneath here, you can see the reinforcement plate under here that runs throughout uh, the entire top of the deck. Very similar to what you'll find on our Hero deck and our Velocity Plus deck with that extra reinforcement at the spindle areas where it's needed. You're going to see a two-blade two system on this machine. And with it not being a timed deck, it is an offset deck. That's going to make the event of whenever you have belt breaks, or just you need to update that or work on this system, it's going to be a much quicker belt change. You can do it in really a matter of minutes compared to a more complex setup that you might find on a time deck. You'll see the heavy duty, heavy duty idler system on this machine that really mirrors what we have on our um, higher end product. Really nice beefy spring, beefy um, idler arm, so real rock solid unit right there. We'll shift around here to the height of cut on this machine. Right now where we're currently at is one and a half inches to five inches on this machine and it is in quarter inch increments. So again that's kind of what you're going to find on our zero turn riders, V-Ride, our entire lineup. We set it down to the quarter inch increments. So a nice advantage with this machine is being able to get really truly precise to where you want it to be rather than in half inch increments. And it is a vertical pin drop so it's going to be really nice. Um, for adjusting it, that's the same setup that we're really running on a lot of our riders right now. Shifting to the handlebar area, what you'll see down here, a little hard to see uh, with the knob in the way, but you're gonna see three different holes that will allow you to raise and lower the handlebars on this machine. So uh, shorter gentlemen like uh, Pat Roloff or females running this machine are gonna be able to lower this. Sorry, Pat, I'm really coming at you today. Um, uh, but you're going to be able to raise and lower this based on operator preference. Um, so that really is going to help you increase the comfort of your machine um, for you. It's nice, heavy-duty, beefy, oversized um, handlebars. So it get, has a really nice grip and a nice feel. And you'll notice at all four corners that the cables on this machine, the throttle cable, the transmission engagement, those are all fed internally through these uh, uh, handlebars. So that's going to give it a nice clean appearance, as you can see right here. And it's also going to protect those cables 
in the event you're mowing around bushes, trees, whatever might come and snag on those cables. Uh, so it, it really helps clean it up nice visually and it protects those cables as well. And shifting here to the operator station, we wanted to have absolutely everything we could um, for running this machine all in one single place. So what you're going to see here is you're going to see your throttle and your choke. Full forward is your choke engagement. You'll see your blade engagement and you're also going to see your transmission drive engagement right here. And then also you, right there you're going to see a standard hour meter, hour meter um, on this machine. One thing I do want to point out while I'm physically holding this um, like this, again the prototype machine just want to keep hitting that point through. Um, these bales for the engagements are actually going to be more flush mounted on this handle. Um, so you're not going to have that feel of a uh, bale on here. That's just not currently on this model that we have here today. Um, and then also while we're at that angle, you can see the angle of these handlebars kind of follow the more natural ergonomics of your hand when you reach out. So we got that inspired inspiration by our SWZT walk behind that has the ergonomic handles. So we brought that same ergonomics to this machine right here. And also to start the machine, real nice feature for us, the recoil start again is mounted up here at the operator station. Very easy to pull and get it started. No needing to go to the side of the machine and crank it to get it started. So again, I can probably speak for myself. This is one of the biggest reasons I'm upset we can't be at GIE. I know we've had an incredible amount of feedback of people wanting to see a machine like this. I know you guys would have really liked to see it in person. Um, again, prototype machine. What you see here today is going to be a little bit different from uh, when it's going to be in production. The number one question I know we might be getting uh, submitted right now via live is uh, MSRP. That we don't have for you, unfortunately, at this time because it is a prototype machine. Um, specs are subject to change at this time, but we can tell you with where the project is and where our targets are, this is going to be very, very competitively priced in the market. Um, so we're really looking forward, again, like I said, once we post these video clips online, bring us your questions, bring us your feedback once this eventually reaches pilot stage next year. Um, use that as an opportunity to give us your feedback. And uh, that kind of covers the uh, new Skag SFC finish cut 30 inch mower. Uh, the weight is finally almost over, the prototype you're seeing at least here today. And with that, we're going to wrap it up and we're going to transition into the uh, live Q&A session. Thank you. Dennis, those are exciting new products. That's fantastic. You guys uh, really have some good stuff in development. Uh, we do. Lee, it's, uh, it's nonstop. You know, Matt and his team in our research and develop department, um, yeah. pretty much uh, those guys will put in the hours, the weekends. Uh, I know Matt's been here on weekends uh, to be able to offer the things that we are, have these new products here as well as the product improvements are out there. And um, it goes on from there. I tell you those things, but no, um, I, it's, yeah. it's a little early for that. But just these two are fantastic. Yeah. So these these should do really well for you.